Greetings, everyone. Today we're looking at a, a parable that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 16 uh, that we call the parable of the shrewd manager. Uh, there's this wealthy man who has a, 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 an employee who manages his property and his wealth. And he discovers that this employee, his manager, the text calls it, or Jesus calls him, uh, is wasting his possessions. So he decides to fire the man. He tells him, I'm going to fire you. The manager realizes he's not strong enough to dig. He's too ashamed to beg. So he comes up with a scheme to provide for himself after he loses this job. He starts calling in all of his master's debtors and only making them pay half of what they owe to his master. Now, what is he doing? He's gaining allies. He's, he's creating IOUs. He's got all these people now that will see him as a friend that they owe, uh, owe one, uh, owe a favor to when he gets out of this job. Now, the manager catches him doing this, uh, but he uh, praises him as a shrewd manager and sees it as a wise thing. And, and uh, uh, so I want to make two points out of this parable based on what Jesus says after he tells this parable um, that I think are pertinent to our time today, uh, to our times today. The first point comes from Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Jesus has just told the parable, and then he says this, I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth. Now, we shouldn't see that as immoral, immorally gained wealth. It's just, it's just wealth that's not Christian, like it's not spiritual. So it's money and property, not, not necessarily evil, just not... Uh, not spiritual in nature. So I tell you to make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth. Now, how do you use unrighteous wealth to make friends? It's very simple. It's a lesson we read of all over the Bible, particularly in the New Testament. Use your wealth to help people in need. Use your wealth to help others, right? Help the interest of others. So make friends by uh, means of unrighteous wealth so that when it fails, they may receive you into their eternal dwellings. Notice what he says when it fails. Now, what does it refer to? It refers to the unrighteous wealth. Make friends with them using unrighteous wealth so that when the unrighteous wealth fails them. So he doesn't say if, he says when. All worldly possessions will fail you. Either you'll lose them, they'll be stolen, they'll be destroyed, or you will die. Eventually, all of the things that you have in this world uh, will be stripped from you. And so uh, Jesus says, when, so, so use unrighteous wealth to make friends so that when the unrighteous wealth fails them, listen to what he says, they will be able to invite you into eternal dwellings. What is eternal dwellings? It's heaven. Here's my take on this. Jesus is saying, help those in need now so that they would give their lives to Christ Use physical things, wealth, to help them now so that they will give their lives to Christ so that one day, even when all of their physical things fail them, namely when they die, they will still be, be in heaven. And when you get there, they'll be able to greet you and invite you into their mansion, their eternal dwelling there. Here's the bottom line. Use your wealth to help people in an effort to bring them to Christ. But I want to say to you that wealth does not have to be money. It could be anything you have in abundance or that other people need. Food, time, advice, tools, a listening ear. Right now you have a unique opportunity to be there for people and help them during this time. And who knows? If you help them now, you may just get to see them in heaven one day. Jesus continues in verse 10. He says, One who is faithful in, a very, in very little is also faithful in much. One who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the un, with the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is in others, who will trust you with that which is your own? The, the indication is here. You have nothing of your own while you're on this side of heaven. Verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either they will hate one and love the other, or they will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Whatever you have been given... Money, property, health, time, the ability to listen or speak or sing, a lawnmower, the, the talent uh, to cook or fix cars, freedom. Whatever you have been given, you are meant to manage that. Use it as if it belongs to someone else because it does. Use it to serve God and don't fall into the trap of serving the gifts that he gives us rather than the giver who gave them. Here it is. 
Use what you have for God. Don't let the things that you have use you. In other words, don't let the things you have become your God. In times like these, we often discover what our idols are. It, it, it's those things that you begin to get frantic about losing, as if if I lose this, then it's all over. There's only one thing. There's only one thing that you have to have, and that is the gospel. And no one can take that away. Those things that you start to lose your mind over losing, those things have, might have become more important to you than Christ. Remember, you can't own anything here. The only things that you actually own, that you can ever own, are the treasures you store up in heaven. True riches, Jesus calls them. We'll see you tomorrow.